Hi everybody, I am going to talk about family with reference to its meaning, types, evolution, structures and features. Family is the basic unit of human existence in society. In a civilized society, family is seen as a fulcrum of society. It is a unit that reflects the economic growth and the socio-political development of the society. In the modern society, the individual families are measured to gauge the development of the nation. At the end of this talk, you will be able to understand the meaning of family, to know the different types of family and to learn the essential features of family. Let me begin with the definition of family. At the outset, it is to be admitted that there is no just one set of definition for the term family. The meaning of family takes on different forms as human beings grow up. The understanding of family at the age of 10 will differ from the understanding of the same at the age of 50. Even such as birth, death, separation or divorce can dramatically alter an individual's understanding of family. However, the definitions shaped by culture describe the nature and relationships within a family beyond the stereotypical definitions. As a basic unit of human society, Family comprises of individuals with the conjugal relationships living together, sharing a common space, ideas, feelings and materials. This unit is a primary institution of the society and it establishes the fundamentals of relationships among human beings. The functions are based on an ideology and in general Families in India are set in a patriarchal ideology. According to the United Nations Organization, family is seen as a natural and fundamental unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. The United Nations Organization states in Chapter 1, the family is a social group characterized by a common residence, economic cooperation and reproduction. It includes adults of both sexes, at least two of whom maintain a socially approved sexual relationship and one or more children born to the sexually cohabiting adults or adopted by them. This definition which embodies the concept of the nuclear family has been the most widely cited definition in the sociological literature of the family. Charles B. Nam in his book, The Concept of the Family, Demographic and uh, Genealogical Perspectives defines that the family is generally regarded as a major social institution and a locus of much of a person's social activity. It is a social unit created by blood, marriage or adoption and can be described as nuclear with parents and children or extended encompassing other relatives. These definitions acknowledge the relationship and the bond among the individuals in the family and the different roles they play in the unit. Let me mention about the evolution of families. While trying to understand the evolution of the family, we learn from scholars like Bridget Holt that the families were the contribution of human pair bonding and high levels of paternal investment in raising children and the recognition of the reproductive role of women. The history of the family is a branch of social history that concerns the socio-cultural evolution of kinship groups from prehistoric to modern times. 
The family has a universal and basic role in all societies. Research on the history of the family crosses disciplines and cultures aiming to understand the structure and function of a family from many viewpoints. For example, sociological, ecological or economic perspectives are used to view the interrelationships between individuals, their relatives and the historical time. The study of family history has shown that family systems are flexible, culturally diverse and adaptive to ecological and economical conditions. Let me outline the structures of family. The family structure is the arrangements of relations between the members, the belief system and the relationship pattern adopted for day-to-day -day functioning and the sustenance of the family tradition. The family structure varies according to influencing factors like time, region, and other socio-economic cultural conditions. Being an institution, the family has a size and membership and is hierarchical in nature. The family structure which is based on the patriarchal ideology has a strong power structure. The patriarchal mode gives a power to men and they are the major decision makers. Decisions about the wealth of the family, purchase of assets and other decisions related to occupation, education, marriage, property and social relationships are taken by the head of the family, in general a male member. The manifestation of the power structure in the family is often an unequal distribution of resources and opportunities. As a result, women mostly become the victims of such a system. Each family has a belief system and a set of values that have been followed for generations. It has its own system of communication and the relationships among the members are nurtured and close-knit. The structure also defines different roles for men and women. We need to know the different types of families in order to understand their functions. Let me first outline the types of families. Single member family, nuclear, broken nuclear, supplemented nuclear, broken extended and joint families, which includes linearly extended families and collaterally extended families. There are some other types of families which are emerging at present and gaining social recognition and they are same-sex families, families with the children from previous marriages, families with a single parent with an adopted child, families with only adopted children, families with adopted and biological children. Let me briefly explain these types of families single member. This type of family has only one person. The others may have either died or the person may have opted to live alone for different reasons. Nuclear. This type of family includes a nuclear pair, namely head and spouse with or without unmarried children. Nowadays, both the husband and wife come out of their homes and establish their own home, which is nuclear in nature. The growth of nuclear families is on the increase due to higher education and employment. Though these families imbibe their patriarchal ideology, opportunities for democratization and equality are more. Women contribute economically and thereby a shift is seen in the division of labor. There is also a danger in these families. If they uphold the value of patriarchy, take to violence and abuse, it makes the members 
feel insecure, broken nuclear, head without spouse but with unmarried children. A family without an adult male puts the entire burden of child rearing, economic contribution and other social obligations on the woman. This is mostly due to the demise of the head of the family or desertion. Another trend that has developed over the years is that though the male or the father in the family is available, he seldom takes responsibilities in most cases. Members of such types of families undergo great stress and emotional imbalance. There are chances for the children to get disoriented if not guided properly. Supplemented nuclear. This type of family refers to the head and spouse with or without unmarried children but with other relatives who do not currently have spouses. This kind of family emerges as the outcome of moving away from home by any of the relatives of either parent. Such families are mainly seen in cities. The presence of an additional member certainly influences the family atmosphere and dynamics. However, the impact can be either positive or negative. For example, if the person is a teacher, he or she takes care of the academic activities of the children and thus contributes to their academic excellence. The same way, if the brother of one of the spouse stays with the nuclear family for employment reason, he tries to correct the children according to his perspective which may not be acceptable to the mother and the children and gradually it may lead to negativity towards that person and affect the happiness and harmony of the nuclear family. Broken extended nuclear. Head without spouse but with other relatives of whom only one has a spouse. In such a family, the spouse is either divorced or dead and the head has the entire responsibility. One of the relatives might have a spouse but the responsibilities are not shared among all. Supplemented broken nuclear. Head without spouse, with or without unmarried children, but with other unmarried or separated or divorced widowed relatives. This is a more complicated family as more than one person in the family has problems, such as problems in communication and accepting the view points of others and it affects their relationship. The relatives trying to influence the unmarried children and their interference in family affairs disrupt the serenity of the family and make the children confused on whom to listen as each one of them trying to influence the family according to their experience and conviction. Linearly extended family. This type of family includes spouse with the married sons or daughters and their spouses and parents with or without other not currently married relatives or head without spouse but with at least two married sons and daughters and their spouses and parents with or without other currently unmarried relatives. Collaterally extended family. Head and spouse with married brothers and sisters and their spouses with or without other relatives including married relatives or head without spouse but with at least two married brothers or sisters and their spouses with or without other relatives. Let me elaborate on joint family and its functions. Joint family is a consanguineous family unit that includes two or more generations of kindred related through both the paternal or maternal line which maintains a common residence and are subject to common social, economic and religious regulations. From culture to culture, the variance of the term may have different meanings. 
Let me first explain the economy in joint families. In joint families, the breadwinners were mainly men and all the men were engaged in the traditional economic activity. It can be agriculture, artisanal work, fishing or wage work. The income was centralized and managed by the eldest man in the family, maybe the father. All the other men, sons and grandsons, contributed to the economy. The economic need of the family was taken care of by the elder men. The economic contributions of individual members were seldom calculated and therefore the needs of the members were met irrespective of their economic contribution. Let me mention about the maintenance of customs and traditions in joint families. The customs and traditions and other religious practices are given the supreme importance in joint families. Festivals are celebrated and customs are followed according to the religion, caste and the family tradition. Women carry out duties such as preparation of food, observance of the customs and they train young girls meticulously to follow them. Let me mention about the child care and upbringing. In the joint family system, the children are looked after by all the members. The elderly members of the family, by reciting religious texts or life story of heroes, educate the children with the moral values. Moreover, they insist that the boys should learn from the men's behavior at home, whereas girls are told to follow the behavioral pattern of women, especially their mothers. Adherence to family norms and customs are given much importance. With regard to home care, day-to-day -day preparation of food, gathering the food, materials, preservation, etc. were solely the responsibilities of women. Women saw that the food was made according to the taste of men in the family. Women were the caretakers for the well-being of the family members. Let me comment on the role of women in joint families. In most of the traditional families, the role of women was confined to domestic affairs and their individuality was not recognized to a great extent and many of them were also subjected to violence and abuse. The structure of the family as an institution had been primarily responsible for transmitting the hierarchical notions and patriarchal values. Women hardly owned any assets and in most of the families their share from the ancestral home was also pulled into their husband's home. Discrimination based on gender was not uncommon and the extrapolative nature of the castes and the religious systems aggravated the discrimination. Women's body, mobility and sexuality were controlled in most of the traditional families. Let me tell you about the challenges of joint families. Today, the traditional family setup is facing a lot of challenges and one of the challenges is the impact of the globalized world and its influences. Urban style of living and dependency on virtual knowledge for every aspect of life from child rearing to health issues diminish the role of the traditional family. The need for women's economic contribution also slams the existence of the traditional family. The joint family is on a disintegrating path ever since the society graduated into an age of technological advancement, changing gender roles and better employment opportunities. Interdependence on each other in large families seems to have been replaced by independent living and a self-sufficient attitude. 
living together under one roof which was once about shared values and harmonious coexistence today raises questions on adjustment and compromise couples after marriage settle down away from their in-laws and relatives to avoid what they now call an intrusion into their conjugal space that decades back did not mean the same let me describe the essential features of family like any other institution the institution of family also has some distinct features and the stability of the family depends on its adherence to these features relationship economic stability common habitation and size informal family constitution distribution of roles personality formation communication and sharing emotional bonding social and religious orientation security and support and dependency on the state for development let me briefly mention about each of these features relationship is a precondition to establish the family and without it a family cannot be formed the members in the family may be married or unmarried or may be permanent or temporary the family builds relationships among the members and with the members of both paternal and maternal families relationship through marriage is also established in this unit families build relationships with communities and with the neighborhood economic stability refers to the financial stability which every family has evolved by their own methods whether working for someone establishing their own enterprise or by the inheritance of ancestral property the family follows different ways to sustain the economy the family members understand the importance of economy for the smooth running of the family normally the head of the family takes responsibility for the economic stability of the family but in the modern world the valid contribution of other members especially women to the economic stability is on the rise with reference to common habitation and size each of our families has a common place of dwelling according to the economic status of the family the comfort and facilities may vary nowadays we see the members moving out of their home for employment and educational purposes but the native habitat is considered as the family each family has a sizable number of members living together the members can be born in the family or may be adopted each family frames a constitution which is informal but expected to be practiced by all this constitution defines the role of each member in the family and it includes the social norms customs and the behavioral pattern to be followed by the members including the do's and don'ts each member is expected to behave in a certain pattern and unacceptable behavior is restricted distribution of roles each member of the family has a role to play in the family mainly the father is the head of the family he is a breadwinner and a major decision maker the wife and other women members are normally assigned to their respective roles the children are also given certain roles and responsibilities with the change of time and the technological development we can see the shift in roles in nuclear families personality formation the family is a fundamental unit in which the members personalities are molded the messages from the family influence the person's attitude and behavior scientific studies have shown that the inputs given to a child in the formative years 
contribute to the brain and personality development of the child. Therefore, the role of the family in personality formation is crucial. Communication and sharing. The families evolve their own communication methods and space for sharing. The needs, likes, dislikes and viewpoints are communicated within the family. Resources and opinions are shared. The deeper the communication is, the stronger is the bond in the family. Emotional bonding. The evolution of the family has brought in the aspects of emotional bonding among the family members. Emotional bonds are strong between parents and children, husband and wife. Social and religious orientation. The values, customs and the culture of the families are based on their religious orientation and the practices of the inherited caste. The families are dependent on their ancestral lineage and families with strong community bonds follow the traditional community in matters related to marriage, death and issues related to assets and etc. Dependency on the state. Each family is a member of the state and has identity with it. Families benefit from the services of the state like telecommunications, public distribution system, legal system, etc. Families pay tax to the state and expect its intervention in their development. Security and support. The family is a place considered to be the most secure. Ideologically, it is the institution that assures security and support for all its members. However, it is also true that there are instances of abuse and negligence of children and women in some families. Let me sum up. Family is a basic unit and a primary institution of human society. It establishes the fundamentals of relationships among human beings. The functions are based on an ideology. There is not just one set definition for the term family. The meaning of family takes on different forms as human beings grow up and go through different experiences of life. In India, according to the National Family Sample Survey, Types of families are categorized as single member, nuclear, broken nuclear, supplemented nuclear, broken extended and joint families. The types of joint family are linearly extended families and collaterally extended families. The family structure is the arrangements of relations between the members, the belief system, and the relationship pattern adopted for day-to-day -day functioning and the sustenance of the family tradition. The institution of family also has some distinct features and the stability of the family depends on its adherence to these features. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.